today we're going to talk about our silk screen black and white and how to use those on glass without silk screening. So another use that we have for it is you can mix it with clove oil and use it with the quill pen that we have on the Colors for Earth website. So what I'm going to do is mix them up to show you the proper mixing, okay? And we'll start with the silkscreen white SSW 102. It's a dry powder. This is the enamel base that we have actually added more pigment to so that it's whiter because when you silkscreen with something you tend to uh, thin it down and going through the screen it makes a very fine line and to get that to stay white uh, we need to pump it up or stay black you pump up the pigment that's in there okay all right so what I've done is take me some of the silk screen white out in a little cup um, I, we sell these little jars and I like using the glass jars they're shallow as far as dipping a pen into okay you can see that it's let me set it down and show you that it dips right into that it pretty much fills it so as long as you have a good amount in the jar uh, and it stays liquid you can reconstitute it in there okay so what i've done is take maybe a half a teaspoon and then i'm going to use just a uh, clove oil you can buy it pretty much anywhere i think i got this one on amazon you notice that the clove oil is like a, a yellow or a, a tan color so the, your mixture will turn that color also okay you can see that in there all right so what i'm going to do is just take my tool and i'm going to mix that up start with like a 50-50 um, mix and then it really depends on uh, your pen and the flow and we'll just have to uh, test it and try it okay and I like to smash it against the wall of the container just to make sure that it's got all of that absorbed okay now I'm going to show you mine that is mixed up so I've just written on here uh, what's in here and you can see that it's separated you can see it off to one side okay so all I have to do is just take that and work it up just like your other enamels this is just clove oil instead of your regular medium um, I like the feel of the clove oil with the quill pen uh, that's the reason I'm using it it seems to flow better uh, the clove oil, oil excuse me the clove oil will keep it open longer and whereas your glass medium tends to uh, dry fairly quickly so and you can see that that pretty much has reconstituted so what I'm going to do is add this to my mix that I already had and then we'll check the consistency again and this would be the same for the black so whichever one you're using um, I have tried the enamels and it just doesn't work there's too much uh, frit in those to actually get it to flow through the pen uh, you work really really hard at it um, I guess you could if you wanted to but it's it this is so much easier I definitely recommend this okay so you can see that it pretty well flows off of it I mean it's just kind of dry. there's not enough to even keep it on the tool so it's a definitely a milk consistency okay so this is the white I'm gonna open my black and see how much I've got in there there's a lot of oil just sitting on the surface there so let's mix that one up so it's pretty creamy depends on how long it's been sitting there but the clove oil will keep it um, open longer uh, your medium will just dry like your regular enamels excuse me enamels do and you'll have to add more uh, medium to reconstitute it and then you're looking at little chunks okay this see how that kind of strings versus dripping so that's 
a little thick. So I'm going to add two, three, four, five drops and check it. And as you're working with it, if it just doesn't want to flow off the pen, then add another drop, mix it, try it again. But start with the 50-50. And now you can see that it drips versus string. Okay. All right. So what I've done is I'm going to close this one up because I'm going to use the white first and close your clove oil just so you don't spill it and have that smell. Okay. Um, I've got a pattern under here. This is a 12 by 12 and what I'm going to do is show you. I'm going to have the underneath side will have half black and half white glass. Okay. So my intention is to do the design on this side with black and the design on this side with white. Okay. Um, have you a paper towel that you can rest your wrist on or get um, the armrest out if you want it. Uh, we have uh, acrylic armrest on the website that you can purchase if you like to work with those. Okay. All right. So when I'm doing this, I usually put um, my jar on my surface. It's just easier to make sure. And I did clean my glass with uh, white distilled vinegar. Uh, we find that's the best to clean with, okay, when you're using our products. If you have something else that you've tested and it works, then that's great. Um, it's not going to hurt it. Okay, so a lot of times I will start in the middle and come out. So on your pin, you have this little oval. I'm going to show the side camera. Okay, you see that little oval? So the color needs to be up past that. So what I'll usually do in is kind of dip in so that both sides of my pin have product on them. And then I can just dip and drag off the side. Okay. All right. So apply pressure, let it start to come out and then follow your line, your pattern. And I'm going to add, um, I drew out a brief pattern, but a lot of this, I'm going to make uh, a lot more lines as I go along. So touch. And what happens is, let me uh, show you. I should have showed you first. So if you look at this and you press down, I'm going to move the camera closer. Okay, so if you press down those tongs on the end, can you see that? I think you can there. Open up and when you lift, they close. So what that does is allow the product to flow from up here down to the tip. Okay. All right. So I'm going to back off. That's why you want to make sure that you, well, let me stay close so you can see. Okay. Um, and I'll have to constantly turn this so you can see it. You can see that I did these here. So once again, I'm going to dip in, drag. I don't want it dripping off of there. Okay. And it depends on how much. So when I start I can see a small drip on the bottom there. When I start, I press down just enough to open the flow and let your product flow down and then just gently tip and do the next. So I want some fine lines coming up to create uh, shadowed lines there. I'm going to back off just a little bit on the camera. Okay. So, and I'm kind of working away from myself as I, I normally would pull these lines towards myself, but for the camera purposes, I'm pushing away. So the more pressure you put down, the thicker that line will be, more will flow out, less pressure, a finer line. Okay. They almost look green. Uh, I think it's because of the 
pattern underneath is what you're seeing. So I'm going to go down here and come in. And the nice thing about the clove oil is at least it stays open long enough that if you touch another line next to it, then it'll just kind of flow into it and make make the design. Okay, I'm going to set this blue tip. Can you see above me here, these here? And hopefully with the side camera you can see, <clears throat> excuse me, um, how much I'm pressing down. This seems just a little bit thin to me. So I'm going to set my tool there and I'm going to add just a little bit more of the powder. Again, this is silk screen white and then I'm going to mix that into it. And sometimes um, you may need to put a couple of drops, cover it and walk away, let it absorb. Um, but you do need to kind of push it against the side and make sure you get all those mixed in because otherwise they'll just be a lump on your pen and it's going to clog and you'll have to rinse it out. And you would just rinse it in water and wipe it off with a paper towel. So again, I'm going to dip that. Let's try this and see if a little bit better. And just keep coming around. Okay. So I can turn my peas. Let's get rid of that. We're going to just touch, drag off the excess. Okay, and then we're going to come over here. And this is a turn back on this petal. Now, again, if you're going to get this back up there where you can see it, um, if you're going to add those detail lines, then you need to keep them with the flow of your piece. All right, so now I need to come back over here and I need to add some on these other petals. I don't want to wait too long, even though the clove oil will stay open for a day or two, sometimes even longer, depends on your environment. Um, you could fan dry it. And I'm just adding little tiny detail marks. Tip, drag off. Okay, so this is pretty simple. I mean, it's all, and you don't want to put so much pressure that um, you're scratching the glass, but the glass does heal in the firing. So don't worry about if you're pressing too hard. Uh, but you can see how it's um, got thicker lines in here. Okay, so let's let me turn this. Make sure you can still see it. And I'm going to add this petal here. You can kind of hear a little bit of a scraping. Can you hear that? It's like a, sorry, almost like a chalkboard. Okay. And then I can pull these lines. And you want to try to pull some different links if you're doing just um, detail. This is similar to the, if you saw the blue bowl, that I did the 14 inch bowl. This is how I did that piece. Okay, so once again, um, this is a turned petal. So I'm going to pull some lines and I'm going to keep turning this constantly reload your pen. You can't go too far. Okay, see, I ended up, the petal was overlapping onto this one, 
and so I came down into there. I went ahead and started this petal here. So see, I, I left my, uh, had more pressure on the pin and that allowed more product to come out. And then I can come up here and almost just pull from what is there already. You just, if you go slower, you're able to grab a little bit more of that. Okay. And it doesn't look like it's got a lot on there when you're doing it, but there really is. Okay, so now I'm going to go back up here and add this one. So I won't bore you with doing this whole piece, but I did want to just show you at least one flower so that you can see how I apply it, make the decisions that I make. Um, and hopefully that will help you when you're doing your designs. Okay, so this is uh, the top of a petal, but we have the bottom here. So if you go slower, you're, it'll pull more of a line. If you try to go real fast, you don't get um, a line at all or a very short line. So you have to give it time to come off the pin is what you're basically doing. Okay, and I'm going to add a whole bunch of little guys because this is like right near the center. Actually, it is cupped over my center of my flower. And there's just another little guy in here. You can come back. Um, there are these, uh, this one's dirty, but there's little uh, Q-tips. They're like a makeup Q-tip. And they have a point on the end. And those are really nice to be able to come in here and say, oh, you know what? I got too much on here. Maybe I want to take some off. And you can just grab and wipe as you're going. Uh, just remember it's clove oil so it's going to stay it's going to kind of run and stay there so it may need to let it dry this is fresh okay uh, so that's a way to remove anything that you're uh, wanting to okay so let's go back down here and finish this little guy i want to add a few little feathery Okay, so there was a lot on my pen right there, so I'm going to just take what's there and pull it up, and then I can come back later, and I can take some of that off like I was just showing you. I'm actually going to use it and come over here. See how I'm doing that? I'm just kind of grabbing and dragging it. turn that because I want definitely want longer a whole bunch of fine lines just follow the flow of your design okay let me come in a little bit closer so you can see that one. I know it's hard to see with the pattern underneath, but I think you um, get the gist of it. The, the side camera is showing you um, how far I'm pushing down and using the quill. We sell the quill pens, coloursforearth.com. Uh, we have two tip sizes. I tend to just use this large one. Um, this is the number 512. Uh, tip, and I believe the other one we have is a 99, but I like this one. I can do, just by moving quicker, you can get the same, you can get a fine line. But you may find that you like 
you know, using the other one. That's totally personal preference. Okay, so I'm going to go back over here. Yeah, you can still see me. Okay. So even though my pattern may be um, smooth, I can add motion to my pen as I'm working, which will create more interest. I'm going to go ahead and outline this and then I'll pull my lines. Just don't forget to go back and finish where you were at. So I need to go back up here. Some short ones, a couple longs. And you can always wait and um, take it off your pattern and see at that point what you think you may need. It may be easier for you to see it. And you know what I just did? This other side is supposed to be um, black. So this is how I'm going to get rid of that. I need to keep part of those lines on one side of this is my center line dividing my white and black glass. Okay, so what I'm going to do actually, um, we have, I forgot to get them out, what's called the shaper tools on the website. Let me see if I can find one real quick. Yeah, here's one. So this has just got a slanted, uh, it's kind of just a rubber tip. So I can take it and actually scoot and come over here and wipe it off on my paper towel because I need these lines to be completed in black. So actually I'm going to take off quite a bit of that so that I can rework what I'm seeing. Okay, so we always learn from our mistakes. All right, so I need some lines here as it goes into that. I think you can see that. Okay, I'm gonna leave that and I'll do that black. Okay, I'm gonna just turn and keep working around I'm just kind of adding some motion to that. All right, so there's a turn back. So if I stay in one place longer, I get a thicker or heavier line. Okay, I'm gonna go back over here and pull some of that up into that petal to create the detail or shading. So this one's coming out this way, so I need it to kind of have a little bit of a curve. Now, that was like one of the first petals, so some of that's slightly dried. So... The faster, remember, if you pull it really, really fast, then you're either going to not get a line or you get a, a super fine line. Or you may wish to switch to that other uh, tip and do some of these details. Okay. All right, I'm going to back off the camera just a little bit so you can see these leaves. Okay. All right, so I'm going to do one of these. First thing I'll do is kind of come around the outside and pull a little bit back in just so that I have some defined lines. So I'm coming out and then just kind of quickly 
pull the motion back towards the center vein. Then I'm going to put the center vein in and then I'm going to pull some fairly quick fine lines. It's hard to talk and do that at the same time. Um, so remember to vary those lengths and you may want to uh, make them look as if they're coming off of a side vein and just do multiples uh, beside that. That's kind of what I did on one of the other pieces. Okay, let's do another one. I think you can see over here. All right, so I'm going to outline, pull in a little bit, pull in, pull in, and I'm really doing this backwards. Normally I would pull towards myself. But for the camera, I'm going to do it towards you guys. And this is a turn back. We'll add a few little fine lines. I'll pull in that center vein. See how it's thicker at the bottom? And then it gets thinner because that's where I started. So if I hold my pen open, I get a thicker area and then thinner as I go. Okay, so I'm going to pull in a side vein and a few detail. Come up here and grab a side vein, do the same. Pull. Remember to vary the length. So you've got short and long. It makes it more interesting. And basically you're shading as you're going. And you may go back and add some extra lines from the outside coming in. All right, so that's really all there is to this. Um, you could do this after you've painted and you could come in and add this on top. Um, it looks difficult, but it's really not. And I just wanted to share with you how you can use your silk screen products uh, in another way. So because they do not have as much frit in them, you're able to use them with the pen. Um, I have some other new products that I'll show you later to use with the pen, but I wanted you to see this. Those of you that maybe have the pen, you've been working um, doing the ink technique with the color concentrates and you've got your pen, you may have the silk screen. This is a way to do it. You can also, um, you know, use the color concentrates. I just like the flow of this. I don't have to fight with it drying on my pen. Um, and it just works really nice. I can get these nice fine details. Now, what I'd like to do is I'm going to show you. I'm going to put this blue towel underneath the glass so you can kind of see what I've done. And I taped the corner so it's going to be hard to show you. But all right, there you go. So you can kind of see what that looks like. So you may say, you know what, you didn't put any maybe up here. So this is like when you take it off and you look at it. So this petal doesn't have any fine lines coming up from the bottom. I was moving fast and forgot him. So you can go back in and add those. Maybe you want a few up here. So I'm barely touching that glass. Okay, so that shows you a couple of different ways uh, that you can apply it. If you press down, open that up, um, you're going to get more flow. So like on this leaf over here, we need more lines. Uh, coming out from down here to show that that's underneath that other one. 
because that stays open, see, I can go over that line and kind of straighten it back up. I hope this is something that you'd like to try. Um, I will put this pattern out there for you so that you can have it. Um, probably put it on the website. Maybe I'll do a blog post with it, um, and I'll see if I can uh, put it underneath in the comments. I can put a uh, JPEG file or a PNG file so that you can have it. So, um, so let me quickly uh, close this. I'm going to just put that pin in the water, and then I'm going to wipe it off. So to clean it, all I'm doing is wiping and then I'm just kind of pushing up underneath it just to make sure that I get it from all those curved surfaces, okay? All right, so let's do a little bit of the black right next to it so you can kind of see where I'm going with that. And you see it didn't take that long. Um, I don't know how long we've taped, but anyway. All right, so just double check your black. Make sure that's mixed up. Make sure your tools are wiped really, really clean because you think they are and then you start mixing that white and you may see that uh, you've got some black or another color in there. So once again, make sure you get it up over, drag off. Okay, so I'm gonna finish this little petal here. Remember how I told you that, um, and technically I probably would wait until that's completely um, kind of dry because I'm worried that these two products, the two colors, would merge. I probably should have mixed that just a little bit better. And then I can attach on the end of that other line. Okay, this seems, um, and I did not mix up any new black today, so um, I'm going to add just a touch of the black powder, just because I feel like it was a little bit thin. It was looking a little gray there. And give me just a second to mix this up. Maybe too thick, but I'm going to try it and see. We'll see what we can get. That way I... See, I'm just going right back over those lines. And the black you can see better. And the smaller the area you're working in, it makes it harder to, to get a whole bunch of lines. Let me tilt this. Okay, so you can see, um, if you move too fast, sometimes it just, it, uh, it's like you're not really touching the surface of the glass and it just kind of skates along and doesn't put anything down with it. But you can come back in and add your fine lines. I think it's too thick. I put too much in there. You can also scratch off some of the lines, which is what I'll do right here. Um, 
like I said, you can take that um, Q-tip with that pointed in, you know, and pull some of that off. Just be sure and go back and check those areas because it does leave a little bit of a film on the surface. Um, what I like to do is fire this piece before I fuse it to the other one. And I would fire it at uh, 1325, just enough, just uh, 500. You can go about 450 up to uh, 1325, hold for 10 minutes, and then uh, come back to your anneal. What that does is just kind of burn, it, well it does, it burns off uh, the clove oil and then you can come back and fuse it to your other pieces. Now, um, we tell you not to put silkscreen products between glass. So, what I'm going to do on this one, after I put my black and white under it, when I do my full fuse, I'm going to sift over the whole surface so that it has a nice smooth because the silkscreen products having more pigment it tends to um, be a little rougher not smooth like the uh, the regular enamels because we have more pigment in there okay so uh, remember that as you're doing it i'm not going to do that stem that's right next to that Okay, so I will work on this and I will be back in a bit. I hope you like the look of it and I hope to see you guys doing some of this. Thank you. Okay, so I'm just continuing on. So this is the last on the black. The hard part when you're doing something like this is making yourself stop uh, 
You gotta really think about what your what your pattern is. That's why I drew that line there to hopefully help me remember to switch colors. Remember, the longer you stay pressed down, the more product is able to flow out. If you move really quick, then you get the finer lines. Okay, so that is, I believe, all of my black. I'm going to come back over here and add a little bit more product. I was shy because it was right next to where the white is. Oops, I see something here. I got a big petal with no lines. But I saw that before I changed colors. Okay, maybe just a few more. Sometimes I don't know when to stop. And I may go back, you know, like I said, when you take it off your pattern, or just step away from it and look at it, you can say, oh, you know what, I needed more there. And as it starts to dry, like I said, you can take and wipe uh, and thin down some areas, or you can even, uh, when it's completely dry, scratch them off. A toothpick is a great tool as it dries. Okay, so I'm going to close this one up and then go back to the white. All right, we're going back to the white now. And I'm going to turn this and work at it from this angle for a little bit. All right, this petal comes in this way. I'll do this so you can see how I'm loading and dipping. That will make a big difference. It's a common question anyway. So I think it just takes a little bit of practice um, working with it. just a small paddle so it's just gonna have little short detail lines sometimes when you first start it's hard to kind of get the, the flow going you got to keep loading until you get it just right once you do that then sometimes you can go and go and go for ever it seems like Oh, and look what I just did. Everybody see that? 
even I make a mistake. All right, so what we're gonna do is use that shaper tool and scoot as much off of there as possible. And then I'll have to go back and touch that up. And I'll also check my glass for any smears. Actually, what I could probably do is just take that turn back completely off and just not put it on the design. Okay, so I'll go back when I lift the glass up and look at it. Um, I'll make sure that there isn't any smear lines there. But this is a larger leaf, so I'm going to go a little bit slower. Pull in some longer detail lines. Okay, I think I might be off the side camera. Or Turn it again. Okay, I'm going to go to the bridge so that I can stand or be above this more. Kind of hear that scraping the glass, which is fine. Normally, I would be pulling these lines once again towards me, and I'm doing it away to make it easier for you guys to see what I'm doing. So, in creating these side veins. I'm just adding fine lines to create more shadows and define that leaf. Tilt it just a little bit. And the nice thing about this is, of course, if you didn't like it, you could. Uh, wipe it off, clean your glass to get rid of that oil from the clove oil and start again. And I'll show you a picture of this uh, when I'm done before I fire it. Okay, let's turn this. Okay, we got one more petal here. Bring up some lines. Remember, you've got wet product there. So don't scoot your jar across. Um, these are little jars that we sell also. You can buy them by the single, or you can buy them by um, six in a pack. And they're great to mix your colors in when you're going to do this because they're shallow. It's easier to dip your pen into. All right, so let's see. We've got. Part of the stem there. This is part of the flower. All 
Alright. So hopefully this helps you. Um, watching me do this on maybe open up some other possibilities for designs on your glass. Everybody has a style um, and you may do this completely different than what I'm doing but it's gonna take on your style. to do it and I forgot to say what I'm doing. Sometimes just watching, listening, yeah we all learn different ways by listening, doing, and reading. Okay before I, let me see if I turn this back around. All right. to stay with the shape of the petal. You gotta look at which way it's flowing. So on this one I need to come in and add. So you kinda gotta get it going and then you can pull some lines. Don't forget long and short. larger petals you need to add just a little bit more to them because you need to fill in some of that um, negative space there all right we got one more leaf and then we're done don't forget to sign your work and oh my gosh the pen is awesome for that because it's just like writing with the fountain pen, pencil. Right, let's do this turn back here. I'm going to turn it. It's a tight area and it's hard for me to do the lines that I want to do from that angle. Alright, so Let's get that drip off of there. So I'm just going to pull some short feathery So, and you know, normally I outline and use a brush and do thick and thin lines. So the way to do that and accomplish it with the pen uh, is you just put a little more pressure down, it releases more of the product for a thick and then the faster you move you get uh, the thin line. All right, so let's turn this around and look at it right side. And I'm gonna add see a smear right there. I'm going to add a few lines down here on this turn back. It's folded in. So I just want a couple of really tiny. Okay, and I missed that other line of my 
leaf there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, let me see if I've got a darker. I'm going to take my pattern out from underneath and I have this taped on. And be careful not to hold it at an angle too long because uh, you could cause it to run in that direction if it's real heavy. That oil is still open. Okay, so it's hard to remember. All right, so let's put these underneath and see what we've got. See if there's anything we need to add. There's one. And I'll clean off any fingerprints and all that before I fire. Okay, so what I'm seeing is that my pattern, I should have had black lines there. Okay, so you can kind of see how it looks uh, side by side. I do see down here where I wipe these off that I definitely have like a little line there and I can just use the toothpick and go back between them. Okay, it's pretty cool. Um, I may go back and add some black lines in here. Alright, so let me back off the camera so you can kind of see. Whoops, sorry. I got a light that's causing a, a glare. Apologize for that. Um, and this map that I have underneath it, it's hard to move. But you can kind of see. And then you could sign your name if you're going to do it with the... Um, I've got the white still in the pen. So if I want to come in here... fast. And I, oops, you know what, that 2020 is not going to show on that because it's over on the other side. Oh well, that's okay. All right, thanks for joining me, and I'll give you the firing schedule again at the end. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't miss anything that comes out. Okay, have a great day.